The film which you are about to see is the account of the mysterious killings which befell the relatively quiet French countryside. The year was 1764, and the freshly mauled body of a 14-year-old girl named Marie-Jean Bellet was just found in a field in the French countryside of Gévedon. She'd been watching over her sheep when suddenly something attacked her from behind and tore her to absolute shreds. The town itself of Gévedon in the 18th century was a relative backwater, tucked away in the hills of southern France, most of its inhabitants were still essentially living in medieval times, in what was a hard but content peasant type of lifestyle. Unfortunately though, for the simple country folk that call these lands home, it would only take less than a month for the next body to show up. This time, a 15-year-old girl was mauled and killed, followed by a teenage boy only a few weeks later. And horrifyingly, it didn't just stop there. A little later in the month of September, another woman who happened to be in her 30s was walking a little ways from her house when she was attacked and later found half-eaten on her own doorstep. This was then followed up by another three killings, all in the same month. Many eyewitnesses and different newspapers around the region described the beast as a giant wolf only that this monstrosity had rust-colored fur with a long tasseled tail, a black stripe along its spine, and a nose like a pig. The local populace knew something had to be done, but not being permitted to carry any firearms or really any weapons at all, they mainly only were able to hunt the beast with rocks and shovels, which unfortunately resulted in them not even being able to track the beast. Then, by the time November 1764 came around, nothing had changed and the brutal attacks continued. The local governments had finally had enough and dispatched infantry captain John Baptiste Duhamel to do away with this nightmare once and for all. As a few days would pass, Duhamel would get the news that two children had found their mother's half-eaten body in a field near their house. Then, thinking that the beast would come back to finish his half-eaten kill, Duhamel horrifically ordered her body not to be buried, but once the beast never showed back up, the men then had to regroup. Then, knowing that the monster was targeting women and children, Duhamel ordered his men to start wearing wigs and old skirts, and to also start accompanying children who were herding sheep and cattle. But after about 12 days and patrolling about 8 different villages, the beast never showed. Undeterred though, de Hamel would spend the rest of the winter raising an army of volunteers going to each village and claiming that this animal is a monster whose father is a lion. It remains open what the mother is. Then finally, on the day of February 7th, 1765, de Hamel, along with 20,000 soldiers, villagers, and hunters all set off. They then searched every far corner of Gévedon, and after a while of searching through caves and forests alike, a few of the villagers finally spotted something running into the forest that clearly had something in its mouth. And horrifyingly, as they got closer, they realized that it had the head of a person in its mouth. Unfortunately though, the beast would end up darting off into the darkness of the forest before anybody could even get any closer to actually find out and see. Jean-Baptiste du Hamel had ultimately failed to find the beast, and once King Louis XV found out, he quickly replaced du Hamel and dispatched famed wolf hunter Jean-Charles Denval. Denval himself had, through a lifetime, ridden the Normandy region of France of thousands of wolves, and now King Louis was offering the hunter thousands in gold coins, and with the fame of catching such a nightmarish beast also on the table, Denval set off. As he arrived in Gévedon, he brought along his son, Jean-Francois, and both boasted that they would be able to kill the beast in less than two weeks. Unfortunately though, still hunting in wintertime, the two quickly found themselves being slowed down by heavy snowdrifts and thick forests. The two didn't have the option of slowing down though, for you see, it was now March and the number of half-eaten and mutilated bodies now reached 29, and that was just for the three new months of 1765. Not catching this monster was simply not an option for the two. Frustratingly though, March would soon turn to late May, and still the two had come up with absolutely nothing. And now mad and just ready to move on, King Louis would fire John Charles and his son and replace them with his personal hunting assistant and royal gun bearer, Francois Antoine. Still convinced that he was merely hunting a large pack of wolves, 
Antoine headed south for Jevedon and was ready to make quick work of what he thought was your everyday wolf pack. Though a little later he would be proven somewhat wrong when one of his men spotted a large, massive single wolf near a monastery. When Antoine got word, the next morning he positioned his men along the tree line and soon was confronted with a massive wolf only 50 paces in front of himself. Then Antoine himself would decide to take the shot. He studied his musket, breathed steadily, and squeezed the trigger. By the time the smoke cleared, the wolf was already on the ground, and the men were celebrating. Suddenly, though, in the blink of an eye, the beast had already popped back up and was already charging Antoine as he had only managed to shoot the wolf in its eye. Surprised and taken back, Antoine had no time at all to respond or even get his rifle up in self-defense. Luckily, he didn't have to though as one of his other officers managed to get off a shot, killing the beast before he got too close. As Antoine and his team walked up though, they noticed that the beast lacked the black stripe and bushy tail that the eyewitnesses had said the original beast had possessed. Convinced that this was the same beast though, Antoine and his crew stuffed the animal and delivered it back to the king in the royal court in Versailles. King Louis XV then proudly displayed the beast in his court and even allowed the people of Paris to come and visit and see the spectacle for a small fee. Francois Antoine was then held as a hero and life went back to normal in the small village of Gévedon. Well, aside from the few sightings here and there, but with no bodies or evidence, they were just dismissed as people mistaking what they were actually seeing. Well, at least that was until December 2nd, 1765. Something had attacked two local boys in a field. Luckily, they survived, but were scared out of their minds as they both claimed to have been attacked by the beast itself. Then a few weeks later, terribly, an 11-year-old girl would be found half-eaten, with an eyewitness saying that she was attacked by something much larger than a wolf, and even had a large black stripe going down its back. There was no more doubt. Antoine killed the wrong animal. Unfortunately, by this time though, King Louis and the press as a whole had lost interest in the matter, even though the killings would continue for another year and a half. It then wouldn't be until the summer of 1767 that a large group of 300 villagers would set off into the forest to finally put an end to this wretched beast. Then, a few days into their journey, as they were walking, eventually a large wolf would jump out of the brush to attack them. Fortunately though, one of the men, a local innkeeper by the name of Jean Chastel, took aim and shot at the beast, killing it almost instantly. Then slowly, as the group approached the beast, they could see that it had the reddish-gray coat like the earlier accounts had said. And after the authorities had interviewed hundreds of eyewitnesses, everyone agreed that this was finally the beast that had been terrorizing the countryside for years. Then proud in being held a hero, Chastel then had his prize kill taxidermied and later took it to Versailles to show King Louis himself. Sadly though, King Louis XV went up insulting the villager and told him to go bury his rotting beast before it was too late. Jean Chastel was then cast away. Though in the town of Gévedon, he is still regarded as the hero who finally made their village safe when so many others could not. Between the years of 1764 and 1767, there were more than 100 people killed, and all in the worst ways imaginable. Many people in France and neighboring countries believe that the people of Gévedon were just victims of their own exaggerated imaginations. Many believe that the beast really had to just be a pack of overexcited wolves, or maybe even a hyena escaped from the zoo. Some historians even today argue that the eyewitnesses were actually describing a young male lion, as they all described a beast with a flat head, reddish gray fur, and a dark stripe going down its spine with a frayed tail. Others argued that wolves were actually quite common in the area and would have most likely not been misidentified as often as it was if it was just a pack of common wolves. Regardless of what it was though, over 100 people lost their lives between the years of 1764 and 1767 in the most gruesome ways possible. Though in all reality, what do you really think was going on in the quiet countryside of France? Let me know in the comments. And once again, thank you for joining me. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notification bell for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.